Welcome to the fourth section of the Mastering Prime Faces video course. In this section, we'll be looking at some of the most widely required input components that Prime Faces has to offer. In video 4.1, we'll learn about a few of the text components that can be used for developing sophisticated user input forms. Specifically, we'll take a look at the input text, input text area, and input mask components. First, we'll provide a brief overview of the text components then we'll dive into how they can be used in your applications and in some of their options. Let's get started. The first text component that we'll cover is the input text component. This is the basic text component that is used widely for capturing free text within user input forms. In fact, you'll recall that we already know how to use this component as we've been using it when creating our input forms. What makes the P input text component different from the standard JSF input text component? Well, the most significant difference is that it allows one to apply the prime faces skinning abilities to it. During the course of this video, when I reference skinning, I'm referring to applying different styles so that the components take on a different look and feel. The input text component is an extension of the standard component adding the skinning abilities. The styles are automatically updated and enhanced for us to provide a cohesive theme for all of our components. If we visit the Prime Faces Showcase and take a look at the input text component, you can easily see the skinning abilities when we apply different themes to the page. To provide a quick example of using the input text component, let's open up the autoquote.xhtml view within NetBeans IDE and apply some of the attributes to the input text components that we've added to the view. In this view, there are currently two input text components, each without any attributes other than ID and value. The value attribute is not yet bound to a backend object. At this time, let's create the prime auto quote database table if we have not yet done so by executing the SQL within the create database SQL script. We will then generate the entity class as we've done in previous sections. If you need a refresher on how to do this, please refer to video 2.2. I've already performed these steps in this section so that we can save some time, but I'll show you how to do this in the entirety in video 2.2. Next, generate the session bean from the entity class. Lastly, generate a new JSF managed bean controller and name it prime auto quote controller. Let's inject the EJB into the controller and then create a prime auto quote field named current. Let's go ahead and encapsulate that field to create a getter and setter. Now adjust the getter to first check to see if current is null. If current is null, then generate a new instance of current, otherwise return the current instance. Now we've got our infrastructure for the form. Let's bind the first input text component to the prime autoquote object. If we examine the attributes while working with the tags, we'll see that they are the same validation attributes as the standard component offers, namely max length and required. This can be used to specify the maximum length of text and also to designate the field as required, just like the standard input text component. If either component fails validation, then the field will be outlined in red once submitted. The only difference as far as usage is concerned is that if we wish to submit the field via AJAX, we should embed a P AJAX tag rather than the standard F AJAX tag. We'll get more into the working with the AJAX tags in, in section eight, where we cover AJAX in detail. Let's move on to the input text area. The input text area component allows us to enter lots of text into a single component. The input text area component is an extension of the standard input text area component, and again, it is skinnable. It also contains a number of extensions to the standard component, making it much more flexible by providing more options for advanced usage. The input text area component contains an autocomplete attribute for providing autocomplete functionality, much like that of the standard autocomplete component. It also contains an auto resize attribute to make the component automatically resize when lots of text is typed. This can be beneficial to set so that the user can actually see everything they've typed into a field without scrolling up and down within the bounds of the component. The remaining characters counter will display the number of characters that are left for use. Let's start by adding a new field to the auto quote view 
and label it Quote Details. Let's add the input text area component after that label and provide an ID attribute of Quote Description. Next, add the Cowls attribute and provide a number of 20, which represents 20 character columns. Provide a Rows attribute of 5, which represents 5 rows of data. We now need to set the value equal to prime auto quote controller dot current dot text field. For the purpose of this demonstration, let's go ahead and add the auto resize attribute and provide a value of true. Now, run the application again and load the view. There you go, so far so good. Let's move on. Next, Let's take a look at the input mask component, which allows a developer to force a user to enter the expected text format into a field by specifying a mask over the input. For instance, if one wishes to have the user enter a social security number or a telephone number, the input mask component can be used to force the entry into a specified masked format. We took a brief look at this component in section two, if you'll recall. In our example, we have the input mask component in use for templating a telephone number. Looking at the component more closely, you can see that the mask attribute is used to specify the desired input format. In the mask, a nine can be used to represent a digit, star is used to represent alphanumeric, a is used to represent upper or lowercase letters. Let's take a look at this component in action. If we run the application now and try to enter some text into this component, we are forced to adhere to the mask that we've specified for the field. Looks like it worked just as planned. This is great news. That ends the video covering input text features of Prime Faces. Now you have a bit of information under your belt to help you construct some user-friendly interfaces. In the next video, we'll cover one of those most significant input text components in my opinion, the autocomplete component.